Hello, my popping friends. Um, hey guys, it's Tuesday night and my water is gone. <laughs> I just came in and chugged a huge, huge glass of water. And I have a few of my friends searching for me. I've been hanging out a lot on Facebook when I've had time, but hi, Karen and Tracy. Um, I just want to come on and say hello and check in with you guys. I was hoping to film more this week and I just, I, I can't, <laughs> I can film, but I can't edit. So we're just kind of in that place of it's a busy time of year. If you have been with me for the last couple of years, you guys know that Lent gets really crazy. We have a lot of church, nightly church. Um, I have a caseload of 29 right now. So that is a lot. Um, I was in conference last week and I am on conference Thursday. And then I'm trying to fit in all of my patients as well. And I had a full day of meetings yesterday. And we have church every night this week. So something has to give. And <laughs> sometimes that something is social media uh, and my YouTube channel, unfortunately. And I miss you guys. And, you know, this doesn't mean that I'm not on program and I'm not doing things the way that I normally do them. Uh, I'm not eating much. I think that that is probably where I'm at. In fact, today has been an especially crabby, crabby day. And this is the week during Lent that we um, start fasting from everything. So we really knock down what we're eating. And then we sort of stay really cognizant with that. And then um, Holy Week, we also get, you know, we do that. And so it's a rhythm for me. And it's hard for me because I, you guys know, I have food stuff anyway. So this cycle for me is hard. I think it's hard for everyone that is Eastern Orthodox. And we're only 1% of, of all Christians in the U.S., but worldwide, there's millions of us. And so, you know, I'm doing this with a lot of other people. Um, but it's hard to understand if you're not doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I know a lot of you guys practice Lent and all that, so you get it. Um, but but that's where my headspace is. And it's a very challenging time for me because I feel like on the edge because it's outside of my routine. And I don't do well when I'm outside of my routine. It's like anything else. And then also, if you throw travel and conferences in with that, it really it becomes challenging for me. And what stinks about this, and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I hate that the focus is on food. Like sometimes I just hate food. Do you know what I'm saying? That we have to even think about it. And sometimes it's nice to just not be eating during the day during a fasting period. And then you get really grouchy and your blood sugar drops and you get really tired. And I've had a terrible headache and um, I'm still eating, but very small amounts. And, <laughs> you know, you gripe at your husband and you and you just realize how, what, how food affects you. Um, it's a pretty interesting thing to contemplate. So, and then you realize like, there are a lot of things that you need in life <laughs> and there are a lot of things you don't need. <laughs> so um, I did want to come say hello. I miss everybody. And I have been trying to have some fun on the side. You guys know all about that. Um, I have sort of a little new hobby, which has helped me just do something fun and different um, because the rest of life is a little stressful right now. And I don't know, make new friends and all that good stuff. And <laughs> um, oh, and I didn't know that you're Russian Eastern Orthodox. Very good. I'm um, I'm actually an Orthodox Church of America. So, uh, but yeah, I miss you guys. So I want to come say hello and let you know I'm still popping. It looks different right now. I'm trying to do purple this week, but you know, for dinner I had a uh, English muffin with some Jif whips and a banana on it, 
and two big cups of water because I was so thirsty. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, it's not very fun. And that's the thing is like, I want to come on here and be fun. But right now, this isn't really about fun. And I don't have any new recipes. I had Kodiak cakes for breakfast. I mean, you open the box, you make the Kodiak cakes, you know? So <laughs> that's life. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel. And and last week, the conference was really interesting. So I was at this huge conference, and they had the most amazing food. And the, the first day of the conference, uh, I, there was a medical emergency with one of my team members, and I ended up outside of an OR <laughs> and eating a bag of uh, the only thing I could find in this hospital in Austin was I couldn't, the cafeteria had closed down, it was a bag of yogurt covered pretzels in the gift shop. And because I missed lunch and all this stuff. Anyway, I ate the entire, have you ever seen those flips pretzels? That was the only thing in the gift shop. There were nuts, but I didn't want to eat, you know, the nut package was like this big. I was very hungry. So I ate that. And the next day I was all broken out. It was crazy. <laughs> so my uh, coworker is doing fine. And I don't know. I have a vlog on my phone. I was going to edit it. I just don't. I can't get to it at the moment. But I will. I will get to it. I even need to do my roots. See, I don't even have time to do my, my roots, you guys. Um, so there's Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Ruth Crandall. Hi, Kelly Hunt. Good to see you. I know, Kelly, I just need to get it together. Right now, the Magnolia vlog, my travel vlog, is 50 minutes long. And I know you guys will not tune in for 50 minutes <laughs> of me talking and wandering around Waco, Texas. Um, oh, Ruth has fallen into the peanut butter jar and can't get out. Um, hi, Judy. How are you tonight? It's good to see. Hi, Imar. Is it Imar? Imar. Good to see you. Melissa Campbell. Hi, Melissa. Uh, hi, Lin Linda. Who else is over here? Beverly. Rebecca. Hey, guys. Amazing. 77. Southern Cupanista. Good to see you all. I love seeing my friends over here. So I'm still popping. I know some of you guys have gotten your pop shirts. Uh, I wore my pop shirt this morning while I was getting ready for work. I had my scrubs in the dryer and I was running all over in my pop shirt. It's such a good reminder to be on plan right now and to not lose it and eat a loaf of plain bread because I, I do have a loaf of uh, bread out there, you know, that I could just go eat. <laughs> you guys are like, what are you talking about? I don't know. Lint, Lint just does something to me. So I'm working on it. Please pray for me. And please forgive me if I've offended anyone out there as well. I like to ask for forgiveness from all of you guys every year. Because, you know, I believe in that. And I also know that, you know, I may have unintentionally done something to one of you guys out there. And I just want to say I'm sorry. So but I do love you all. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for looking for me when I'm not around. I love that I've been on YouTube for so long that if I am not as consistent, which I was just on here three or four days ago, I think, Saturday. People are like, where are you? What's happening? You know, um, I'm still here. I just, this is going to be maybe a little quieter time right now. And then we're going to amp back out, up because the wedding is coming. And that was the big conversation the last couple of days as well is Judah and I are trying to get our wedding stuff figured out. <laughs> so he has to get his, uh, he's wearing a suit for the wedding. So he has got to get that figured out. We're talking about, we're not really having a rehearsal dinner. We're going to do something else. And we don't know what that looks like. Uh, but he and I were talking about that a little bit today. Um, I, we have all this family and friends coming in. So hotel rooms and then their travel to Florida. Um, I did turn down a speaking engagement in New York for April because it was just too much to wrap my head around. And honestly, I want to go see my family in Florida. So, but you know, travel, I don't know if travel messes you guys up. It seems like when I travel, I do really, really well initially. And then I'm like, bring on the chips. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, 
just bring it all. Where's the guacamole and the margaritas? I go into some sort of mode of like, if I'm out of town, the points don't count. What is that about me? So, oh, Imar, I'm so very sorry about your father. There are just times when the program, you know, that's not in the forefront, especially when you have something devastating like that happen. Uh, and my condolences to your family and wishing you all peace. And, you know, I, I, I pray that God would show his, you know, shine his face on your family. That's very, very difficult. So, and there's a lot of people out there going through a lot of things. I think the more I'm on social media, everyone I talk to has a story, you guys. And I've been doing this Tupperware thing. And so I'm having to reach out to people about their Tupperware orders and it's you guys, <laughs> and I'm learning more of your stories. And people are, you know, people have really gone through some stuff. And it's amazing how resilient people are and just how kind. I, I have been so impressed here on YouTube with the people that I've met. I mean, I've made just amazing friends. And really, YouTube has redeemed my hope in humanity. Like, I mean, it's just so cool that we have such a neat community. So um, Mary Thompson says, traveling is the easier part. It's when I cross the threshold back home that I lose control. <laughs> like you walk in the door and you're like, throw open the gates, you know, throw open the pantry. I am here, you know, whatever. I just went through and redid my pantry and got rid of all the junk. I made it very Weight Watchers friendly, which is really, really fun. We have one little snack area. And actually, the snacks are all things that I can eat on WW, but they have points. Like, I know the points. So even though there are some little chocolates and things in there, I know how many points each one is, which is really nice. Um, so it's nice to have the refrigerator. I just cleaned out the refrigerator, the freezer, the pantry. And I just did a Walmart pickup. Um, I actually ran and got more toilet paper, paper towels. And I actually bought water bottles, which I'm not a fan of the disposable water bottles, but I'm trying to have a little bit of an emergency preparation thing going on. Um, so I've got some things kind of stored away in a different way than I've done it before. So those are for a more emergency purposes. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm a nurse, you guys, so... I think in, in one way. And, and so I'm like, okay, if I was stuck in my house for 14 days and we're not going to go into why I'm thinking that way, cause I don't want to be an alarmist. What would I need to have? So I'm like, okay, canned goods, water, flashlight, can opener, <laughs> toilet paper, paper, to I don't know, paper towels, like weird stuff like that. I just was going through my list of things and, oh, what do I need to stack up on? I have a transistor radio. Um, cold medicine, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Tylenol, thermometer that works. You guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, Walmart completely cleaned out of hand sanitizer. I was like, where, where is my friend? And I have a lot of hand sanitizer at home because I'm obsessed, but you know, I wanted the bucket. <laughs> the bucket of hand sanitizer. So, you know, whatever, bring it on. I'm just trying to be prepared no matter what. And I always try to be prepared, but I think since I moved here, I kind of slacked off a little bit. So the recent news has me thinking, oh, let's be a little bit more prepared in case we have to stay home. In case, you know, we all get quarantined or something. Let's just, right. Um, oh, Judy said she got some hand sanitizer at Staples, right? I was going to go to Bath and Body Works, but their hand sanitizers are like this big. So um, the mask situation, Ruth, please do not buy the N95 masks, you guys. We need those. You want your doctors and nurses protected in the hospitals so they can take care of you if you need to go there. We need them to be okay. So the big rush for masks, honestly, for me, I think I would avoid big, large 
concerts, gatherings, things like that, where there's a lot of people. Um, there's the three foot rule because, you know, viruses can travel. If someone coughs, they can go up to three feet. Um, if you're sick yourself, stay home. If you have, if you're elderly or have a compromised immune system, or if you have a, you know, young children, just think about it and be wise. And, um, I know some of the, we've only got, a, we've only got a hundred and I think 20 cases of the virus in the U S right. So if you think about how big our population is, that's minuscule. <sighs> that being said, the flu is rampant right now too. So let's just, you know, think about that and be careful, but buying N95 masks is not going to help. So they're asking, the CDC is asking, they're asking people not to go out and buy masks. You guys don't even know how to apply. You understand that I have to have like a checkoff and a certification that I know how to apply an N95 mask. There's a certain way to apply it so it's sealed to your face correctly. So <laughs> I have to go and be tested. Once a year, I have to go get mask test tested that I know how to apply that specific mask. The other masks don't work at all for that kind of thing. So just, yeah, don't do that. Um, you know, what, whatever you feel you need to do, but I'm telling you as a nurse, please let our healthcare providers be able to have access to those masks. We don't need a shortage on our health care, our doctors, our nurses, our first responders, our fire, fire, firefighters. We don't need them to be maskless. I want them to be alive and well to take care of me. Right? Right. <laughs> Karen says, keep calm and wash your hands. That's right. Um, oh, CeeLo Fly, you have your first cruise in May, and this is selfishly putting a damper on it. I know. Right. Rosemary, yes, you have to be fitted for the N95 mask. See, you used to do that as part of your job. That is correct. Um, oh, Ontario, you have 20 cases. Yeah. So anyway, that's just my thought on that. Um. <laughs> Maddie C, you had a cyst removed yesterday and they had you take off all your makeup and your nail polish. And then you had to go to work and you felt naked. I know I'm one of those people that I have to have my mascara on or I feel like a bug. You know, I feel, I look kind of tired right now, but. Um, Kelly says she's going to New York City and flying Friday. So Kelly, bring your hand sanitizer, right? My mom, my mom and dad used to fly all over the world to, uh, to do big speaking engagements. And she and my dad used to fly to Malaysia and Singapore really frequently. And she, she bought some sort of contraption that would like filter the air right around. <laughs> I don't know what it was. She probably got it off of the, what is the catalog on the airline that you can buy all kinds of contraptions? But it was something that sat right here on her chest and it would like fil allegedly filter the air. She also bought some sort of ultraviolet light. So when she got to her hotel rooms, she could ultraviolet and it would kill bed, bed bugs or something. Sky Mall. That's the name of it. Anyway, she's, she's fine. She doesn't do that anymore because she doesn't go overseas anymore. Um, but no matter where she went, she was in India for a while. I have really funny stories of my mom. My mom is a retired nurse. Did you guys know that? So my mom is a retired nurse. And you think I'm a germaphobe. She blows the lid off of everything. Oh, I did order today some On Guard. So I did get my, I know everyone's like essential oils, Amy, whatever. But I got some on guard to diffuse because I like that stuff when people have colds and things around me. So um, she went to India once. They were on a speaking engagement in India. And she told me this story about she was staying in some little hotel that all the windows were open and they were on street level. And in India, the animals are holy, especially the, the cattle. They're, ho they're holy. Um, they're sacred. And so they were walking by her window all night long. She could smell these cows and she was just like, I cannot handle it anymore. So she went digging through a suitcase to find something that would smell good. And the only thing that she could find was a pair of my dad's clean underwear. They smelled like downy. 
And so she put them on her pillow and <laughs> she buried her face in my dad's clean underwear. Anyway, she told me that story when she came back. I was like, mom, you are ridiculous. So now she, she always flies with uh, downy sheets. I, she's very sensitive to smells. So that's, that's my mother for you. But anyway, I totally got off track. I got off track, you guys, um, with talking about WW. Um, nothing really going on. I haven't lost any weight. I'm sticking around the same. Um, I was kind of down a pound on Saturday, kind of down. I was like 0.8 down on my scale uh, when I got back from my trip. And I'm right back up to where I was. So I don't know if that was like a fluctuation, like the pretzels. <laughs> that was like a pretzel fluctuation. <laughs> but I need to be more consistent in order to go down. And so I know the things I have to eat. And honestly, it's not a lot of the carby stuff. So the minute I eat a lot of the carby stuff, like in Lent, I stall out. So I do a lot better on lean meats, lots and lots of vegetables. Um, the more vegetables I eat and the more water I drink, the better things move. And the more uh, protein I eat in terms of lean meat and that sort of thing, um, the more satiated I feel. So that combo for me seems to work really well. So when I'm eating a lot of the carby stuff, I just kind of sit. And I don't know, how do you guys feel? feel? So Danielle, I like purple, but I'm so restricted right now at the moment due to my Lenten fast that I'm not able to do it as fully as I would like to be able to do it. Um, really right now, I'm just excited about having zero point sweet potatoes. I mean, that's my life. Hi, happy mama. Hi, Nightbird. How are you guys? So I'm, I'm excited to get through. We have 50 something days of the fast left. <laughs> I just want to get through those days and I want them to be meaningful and thoughtful and quiet, which I am not any of those things. Prayerful, you know, and then I want to go back to eating chicken. <laughs> I just want chicken. So we stopped eating meat last week. And I'm really missing chicken. I guess I eat a lot of chicken. Do you guys eat a lot of chicken? I feel like I eat a lot of chicken. Yes, a lot of lentils. Oh, my gosh. So we were at the AT&T Center in Austin, conference center, uh, for this conference. And this conference was all, like, medical professionals, physicians, you know, all that. They had the best food. And they made red lentils for lunch one day. They had all kinds of grilled vegetables, and um, I only had lunch one day at the at the actual conference. But my lunch was a huge plate of all kinds of roasted vegetables, um, Brussels sprouts, and green beans, and this huge pile of red lentils. They were amazing, and I think for me, it's like, how do you flavor things so they taste like that? Like I was not missing chicken at all. So Amazing77 says that she eats a lot of chicken. And if she doesn't eat it for a couple days, she misses it. Yeah. So Danielle says she's really loving purple. Um, <laughs> Kelly, you have your own eggs? I'm sorry. I got really excited. I really want chickens. I really, really want chickens. Um, Rebecca, lentils you have to count and beans you have to count on green. So, you know, during Lent, purple's a really good plan for me because a lot of those things are zero. The problem is I just, I overdo it on stuff. Um, Jason's Deli has this sweet potato, literally this big, you guys. And I promise you, I can eat the whole thing. I can eat the whole, I love sweet potatoes so much. I think they may be my favorite food. So, all right, you guys. Um... Oh, Angie, you're going to eye track bites too? Oh, you're going to do purple. Eye track bites has purple? Wait a minute, what? Okay, I have not looked over there at eye track bites in a while. Um, Judy's back on blue. Yeah, very interesting. Everybody's kind of switching around lately. It's interesting. How, what do you guys think about being able to switch around? Do you like that? 
I know every time I switch on the app, which has only been a couple times, it asks me a lot of questions about why I'm switching, which makes me, it makes me think that they're looking at metrics and kind of like why we're doing those things. Um, oh, you have to enroll in a bowl. Ruth, what are you doing? What are you doing enrolling in a bowl? Okay, I want to hear more about I track Bites Purple. So when I get off here, let me know. Lisa, if you're watching, let me know. I didn't know that. Oh, I love butternut squash, you guys, too. So, and Charlotte Welch says that she really likes being able to switch. I do really like that aspect of the plan. I like that we have a choice. I think it's fabulous. So I'm going to get going. I got some things to do before I turn in. Busy rest of the week. We have Thursday all day conference on sexual assault. So <laughs> say a prayer for me. Um, those are always hard for me to hear about. And I know I need to hear about it because of the population I serve. But man, they, those can be, I think those conferences in the CPS um, child abuse ones are just, you just feel like your heart's being ripped out the entire day. So <laughs> say, say a prayer for your friend, um, just for peace and calm amidst the storm. And the whole reason I go to those things is to learn more so I can help people. So <sighs> peace be with you all. Love you guys. Thank you for looking for me. And I'm still here. Reach out anytime. I'm, I'm over on Instagram and it's for nurse 17. I'm over on Facebook, NS for Nurse RN. I'm around, and you guys know I respond, so come say hi, okay? Oh, Imar, God bless you on that, my friend. And again, I'm so sorry about your dad. So, all right, love to you all. Bye. Have a good Lent for those of you that are celebrating. Bye-bye.